my God. Oh my God. Hi. I have respect for all you guys too. Okay. I'm in. I just made it in the door. I can barely make it in at this time. Wait, something wrong with this live. What? What's wrong with it? What? It's the camera goes, I really have to get another thingy. You know, um, what do you call it? The thing, the pod. If I could show you the pod, but I can't show you the pod. If I move it, the whole thing's going to collapse and we can't have that. Hola. Hi, you guys. I made it in. It is so freaking weirdly hard for me to get back. Oh, you had a baby. Oh my God. Take a nap. Congratulations. How was it? How's the baby? I love the baby. What a blessing. Sweet baby, Sagittarius baby on the 14th. How sweet. Oh my God. That's exciting. That's so exciting. Oh my goodness. Babies. I love the babies. Good evening. Um, I get excited with the babies. Excited. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> excited. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I think everybody was murdered and I'm being sued in court because of it. So keep that in mind. I'm being sued. Um, I'm being sued, but I'm sorry. I have an opinion. It's not an intentional opinion. It's just like when it hits me wrong, it hits me freaking wrong. Right? So something about the lighting here went weird. And my phone was kept calling emergency services. And I'm like, why? Are you wearing pants? Me too. Look, I can't even. There, pants. <laughs> I'm learning how to be more stretchy. Uh, let's see. Oh, great. You were clear from your cancer. Um, oh, there you are. Cat, my beautiful cat. Okay, cat. Of course I remember who you are. Cat says I've got Scottish in me. She must recognize it. And by the way, Keith's name, Cat. Cat with a K and my Keith with a K, his name is Scottish and means warrior in the woods. And Sloan is Celtic and means warrior. So you're right. I'm Scottish. I had Keithy, even though I, I don't know. There's probably Scottish in there. I have to go back and look. I haven't been in there for a while. It changes every time. It updates stuff. The screen is black. Why is the screen black? Um, oh, there. You guys can see me, right? There's a troll in here. Hey, Trolls. <laughs> um, trolls. Let me turn it up for you, trolls. Is, is this good? Can you see? Um, yeah, I think the screen is fine. I can see. Uh, yes, an archer with an arrow. Excellent. Excellent. I know. These are my Walmart jean jackets. Kind of stinky, though. You know why? I wear, I wear this one hiking and throw it in the dryer and then pretend that um, it's clean. It just, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, you can see me. I can see. Can you see me? <laughs> I can see you. Um, yeah, you know, it's been super hard to get in here from at five o'clock for some reason. I went and saw Maya's baby. You all know that. I posted pictures. Maya's little one, she waited for little Quinny to be one month old. I cannot pronounce the baby's name. It's an Aztec goddess name. And I cannot pronounce it. So anyway, our cute, cute little baby Quinny is one month old with her and Jake. So I went to meet them all and it was so much fun. And Quinny is, she is a Scorpio, but she is a um, 29 degree Leo rising. And me and Bobby are both 29 degree Leo rising. So we know this little girl is going to be fine. And then she's got a Cancer moon. So that's double water and a 29 degree Leo rising. So yeah. Um, yeah, Leo rising, cute little baby, cute, so cute, so lovely. Maya, Maya pumped everything out. Let me feed the little baby because she knows how much I love them little babies. And I get called auntie. And then I'm going to babysit when the baby's older and she's comfortable and Jake's comfortable. So it's going to be good. Um, <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. I'm very excited. Bobby's a cancer with her chart, the flip to mine, Leo moon, Leo rising. And I'm and Pluto in the first house, and I'm a Leo with three planets in Cancer, Leo Moon, Leo Rising with Pluto in the first house. Leo Rising people, whoop, whoop, whoop. People hate us. That's because we do good things with our hair. They don't like our hair. We either have super long hair. Keithy was a Leo Rising. Um, so they either shaved their head, short hair, long hair. Today is seven years I love. Aw. No, it doesn't make it any easier, Anne. Of course not. It doesn't make it any easier. Mm. 
I'm sorry. No, not a day goes by that if you love somebody and you miss them. Hair and makeup, Leo rising. Yeah, a lot of people don't like us. Um, to that, I say fuck off. <laughs> That's my word of the day. That's my word. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And, um, you know, whatever. North Node and Leo, you got to get more personality out there. Okay, like take your personality and project outwards. That's the Leo North Node. Leo North Node has to develop creativity, sense of self, and projection outward. So take your personality and throw it out there. Yes, I'm a Leo Moon too, but I'm a 12th house Leo Moon with a loaded 12th house. So is Bobby. So we're like Pisces people, really. We are Leo and Cancer and Leo and Cancer and being Pisces. And this little baby Quinny's Leo and Cancer with the Scorpio sun. So yeah, I love my Leo rising too. 12th house Leo, exactly. Um, yeah, I know. It's great. North Node and Taurus. You got the same thing as me, Vanessa. North Node and Taurus, y'all. North Node and Taurus. Build your fortune yourself. Build your fortune yourself. North Node and Leo. Lola, project outwards, outwards, outwards. Pisces. I'm pretending to be a Pisces, so I'm hiding under Pisces. Mercury and Leo. Yes, that is flamboyant conversation. It's always interesting, the stories Mercury and Leo says. Always, um, always, always. There you go. North node too. A lot. North node means the direction you're going to. So you're going to want to project outward, right? Whatever it is. Weird Pisces. <laughs> so, oh, Sag moon. And Beth, I'm surprised you're married. Reason being, not that you can't get married, but reason being, look at this. Hair always gets messed. Itchy nose. Okay. The reason being is um, Sag moon is the bachelor bachelorette sign of the zodiac. Cancer North Node is difficult because it brings family in and then removes family. So it's very difficult. Can be adopted, all of that. This is Mac. This is called Snob. Can you pick this for me? Snob. Snob. So there's that. Snob. Yeah, it's called Snob. Um, okay, so wait, I was going to say something. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. So Gemini moon and something ascended. I missed that. North, yes, and I ain't shutting up. Don't shut up, Carrie. Keep talking. I got told to shut up so many times, and I'm like, I don't want to shut up. I don't care what you say. I don't want to shut up. I don't agree with what you're doing. I don't agree with anything you're doing. And so I just got another uh, letter from the lawsuit, okay? Another, yes. Okay, there you go. 23 years, November to art. And I just got another letter from the weird person suing me. Thank you for that blue. I can't see what it says. Thank you. Let me see. Blue Bell Rose 8. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, the, the lawyer. Thank you very much for that. The lawyer um, people, whatever, asked me if I agreed to something and if they could sign my name. And I'm like, I don't agree to this. I was reading it. I don't even know if what there was. I, I don't even understand what they're saying. I said, I don't really understand. Then the court scolding me. You need to write the court and you need to, agree, you know, do this. Well, I'm not guilty. So I don't agree to settle anything because I'm not guilty. Not guilty. So he's suing me for intentionally inflicting harm this was Walmart. This is a Madden girl and it's a crop. It's a crop. It's Madden girl. Madden girl. Madden girl. Anyway, it's a crop jacket, but they um, intentionally causing infliction of something and financial something and medical something. Um, first of all, in order for anything to be intentional, I have to know you exist. I don't fucking know you exist, dude. So I didn't know you exist. I didn't know that woman, Tracy, the reporter was married. So I didn't know. Every time I get an email from the court, it's, it's disturbing. And because I'm pro se, there's another one pro se. Yeah, I'm still being sued. There's another one, another person on the trial pro se, but I, I have paid for lawyers for divorce for Keith and they don't respond. They drag it out. Secondly, so you're going to have to deal with me pro se. You will have to deal with me not having a lawyer. And the other, the other side's lawyer, she goes, there's good pro bono. I don't want pro bono. I'm not paying anybody because I don't want to and I don't have it. I should not be forced 
to pay to defend myself for something I didn't do, period. Okay, when it comes to the final trial date, at trial, on that date, I will find a lawyer to go into court and speak on my behalf for one day and a thousand dollars. That's what I will do. But I'm not, some people in this trial have already spent upwards of 15,000 to 20,000 and nothing has been handled. You know what's happening? It's court is scheduled for February of 2024. 2024. So like, why am I going to pay a lawyer to hang out all that time? Every time they respond to something, it's $400. I don't, I know they're playing games. I know what they're doing. I'm still not getting a lawyer. So I'm not doing it. And I should be able to be pro se without being scolded. I don't know, but you're, you're this guy, somehow this guy who's suing me, who I didn't fucking know. Okay. Who I didn't, I know. Thank you, Art. This guy who I didn't know was married to the reporter because I didn't know who her husband was. I knew nothing about him. Therefore, it can't be intentional. And intentional infliction of emotional harm and distress and whatever. He's still suing me for that, for, for saying that the reporter did not remove herself from the planet herself. That's an opinion. I was on a radio show. So, and then the other guy, I read this letter from the other guy and it says, you can't possibly be suing us because a self-proclaimed psychic said something and it's not facts. And I'm like, thank you. I'm a fucking psychic. Aren't I a joke? Like, what are you suing me for? Don't fucking mention your name. I didn't say anything. I get impressions, okay? I was asked to go on to something. I said something. So here's my point with that. I'm still not shutting up. If I think someone didn't do something, I'm going to express my opinion in public. You are not going to threaten me with words money, nothing. Cause I do not have to shut up when I have an opinion period. So, um, well now he's, he lost three of the charges, I guess. Um, so there was the Washington personality rights act where he tried to say I was profiting off of his dead relative, but I wasn't because first of all, I didn't make any money. Secondly, I did it the radio show for free. Thirdly, oh, you can't have an opinion. Thirdly, um, when I went on the show, I was asked at the last minute. So now they're trying to do all this discovery, right? So the discovery is if I wrote anybody on the show or they gave me information or what facts am I trying to say what I said are as facts. And I'm like, I'm a fucking psychic. Do you realize that nobody, I know I was at, I know, I, I know what he's doing. Um, I know exactly what he, it's, I know, I know what he's doing. No, but it's funny because I'm like, dude, I'm a fucking psychic. If I had little kids now, they'd take my kids away from me because they'd call me crazy. Yes, it's in Washington State Ninth Circuit Court. I'm being sued in the Ninth Circuit Court for doing, and I, I, I yeah, it's a total, and then the lawyer writes me, I write her back and I get a message from the court, blah, 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 blah. I know, I said something that did strike a nerve and it's like, dude, I am not, and then they're like, do you agree to early settlement? Con no, no settlement because I didn't do it. Nice try. No, and no, and no. And if, and if, if, if you are a public person, like I was a pub, not, I'm not hugely public, a semi YouTubing Instagram, slightly public person or whatever. And when my son died, people said all kinds of things online. That is okay because I was out there publicly. So it's in the paper, it's on the media. This is the same thing. This woman was out there and was public. Yeah, they, I know, can't people, you know, people don't believe in psychics. This guy thinks I purposely said what I said to cause him pain. You have to actually prove that. You actually have to prove that. Anyway, it's so stupid. Um, yeah, I know, I, of course, it's just dumb. Uh, it's just dumb. It's stupid. I don't know what to say, but if the court doesn't look into the fact that I'm being maliciously, I, I guess it's malicious prosecution. It's ridiculous. It's a radio show and this woman was a public figure. So what are you saying? What are you saying? I can't have a fucking opinion. I can have a fucking opinion. I have a fucking opinion. So shut up. I'm not like, and I never said anything about it afterwards till you sued me. Okay, I never, now I'm going to mention it because you're suing me and you sent the article. Um, yes, I can counter sue, but you know what? I've, I've just spent another $2,000 on legal stuff 
trying to get people to sort out and I can't reach the lawyer. So you give them money and I can't reach the lawyer. So I'm fucked out of that money. So that's like 12,000 fucked out of there, pardon my language, in that instance, because they just do it and they say, yeah, sorry, no money, no, we're not gonna do it. And what do you do? You have to pay $400, $500 to sue them in small claims. Yes, you can definitely counter sue. sue. I have to, lit I'm proof of burden on him, absolutely. That's why when they're trying to get me to go through discovery quickly, I'm like, I don't agree to that. This guy has to show me discovery. I want discovery. Show me why you're saying what you're saying. I want to see your bank accounts. I want to see all of that. That exactly. It's absurd. Um, yeah. So it's just, it's absurd. It's absurdity. Um, yeah, I know they said everybody, but no, you're not actually, they wrote it up in Forbes magazine. As I've told you, I don't think you are allowed to speak freely. It's ridiculous. Yes, it's a first amendment. He's trying to say that by me having an opinion that differed from what the police already said, like with this Twitch guy, hi, Ashley, um, with this Twitch guy, they, the coroner wrote on the report what happened, right? Whatever it is, I'm not going to say the word. So in the instance of this lawsuit, the coroner wrote on the report what happened. So if the coroner is on your side and agrees with what you say, then why are you suing me? I just don't see it that way, but I wasn't there unless you were fucking there. Right. If you sue him, if you sue him, you have to pay another lawyer. I don't have it right now. I can't be spending all my life savings on lawyers for what? <laughs> no, I don't have life savings, but I mean, it's gone. So... It's just, I mean, I have to file and do it myself. It's absurd. If you don't have money, you can never get back after anybody. Um, yeah, the show is weird. The show, the media people are calling me basically a self-proclaimed psychic. I never proclaimed to be psychic. I, I just did the work. I don't proclaim to be anything. I'm just some bitch that lives in the valley in California. That's it. I don't proclaim, but it's nice that they put it so... <laughs> it's like whatever and you know I am like an astrologer so that makes sense but it's just so weird anyway uh peanut butter for dinner yeah I know I'm just doing me it's very weird so um yeah no they're like a self-proclaimed I'm like dude this lawyer I can't argue back with that because that guy's getting sued like me it's somebody from one of the I didn't proclaim to be anything okay I didn't fucking proclaim to be anything I've just been doing this work for 40 years it's just something I fucking do. I'm a clown, okay? So I'm like, D what do you, what? Uh-uh. I mean, it's whatever. Um, <laughs> it's like, whatever. Yes, I know. But there's so many people. Here's what I wanted to say. The feelings on the, the um, oh my God, the four students, I can't say it. I know, right? The, are you a self-proclaimed dentist? Oh, I see. I don't fall in the lines of the establishment. Therefore, I'm self-proclaimed. If I had a license that you could take away and stop me from earning a living, then, then I would be a serious person. Well, that's why I chose the career I chose. Because, because I don't want to be taken seriously. So don't take me seriously, okay? I am a clown. How about that? Um, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. But Okay, so the, yeah, the Idaho, I don't want to say that. But the only thing I could pick up from that is I feel like it has something to do with one of the parents. And it could be, um, it could be, yeah, exactly. Well, I could be a self-proclaimed fucking valley girl, okay? I am <laughs> I'm a self-proclaimed valley girl, former Canadian, mother of two children, self-proclaimed. And um, I just feel, I have feelings and I say shit. That's what I say. Anyway, um, the kids, the four kids at college, those four kids, I have a feeling it's connected to one of the parents, a self-proclaimed stripper. Thank you. That's right. Um, exactly. Self-proclaimed dancer, self-proclaimed cook. Now, no one's going to accuse me of that either. Like, it's like, wow, she can't really cook. Um, yeah, this is just ombre nails. Three times in the last month, I have literally broken off my nails and had to redo them. I didn't have to redo them, but I had to redo them. Okay, there. They're just, um, I had to make them shorter because I kept binging them when I'm hiking. Uh, so it's terrible. But the kids, I feel it has something to do with one of the parents. So I don't know if there's a business deal gone wrong or whatever. Self-proclaimed long-distance runner. <laughs> 
self-proclaimed Starbucks. Oh my God, excuse me. Okay, so look, as I burp on camera, I'm self-proclaimed burper. Okay, so did you all, thank you, Keithy's birthday's on Sunday, yes. Did you guys go through Starbucks yet? Okay, so this is, I go through my normal Starbucks in the morning, and this is ombre. It's just an ombre nail color, ombre. It's like, um, and look, I, my nails are so ripped for me, ripping them off and ripping them. Anyway, um, this is ombre. So I went through Starbucks, as you know I do, right? I know I shouldn't, but I did, but I did. So I went through Starbucks and they take the card and they put it in there. And then they're like, this is the girl at the counter tonight, not this morning. She's like, there's something on the screen that you can read and it's for a tip. I am never putting a tip on a card. I don't do it in a restaurant. I don't do it in Starbucks. I'm all not, also not going to tip every day at Starbucks. I usually tip like every once a month, like 20 bucks, 50 bucks for whichever shift and I'm on the most. I'll give them to them in lump sum when I get enough money to do that. I'm definitely, our kids share birthdays. Aw, 31, sweet. 31, that's so cute. So that's what I do. So like now they want you to do it so the government can tax it. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. No, no, no. Aw, Keithy and your little brother have the same birthday, December 18th. They're a hell of a lot of fun, those kids. Um, yeah, so anyway, Starbucks now has a thing. Oh, see, your son will be 31 as well. Starbucks has a thing where it's like you can leave a tip, and now they're like shoving it in your face. Don't shove it in my face. I don't feel guilty. I'll donate, but not on your computer, not on your screen. I give it to the shift people, and I hand it in. $20, $10, $50, not every day, but they get a lump sum when I get a little extra money. That's what they do. That's what I do. Every restaurant, I give them cash. I'm not putting it on there. The government doesn't need to tax tips. I have a problem with that. Yeah, I only tip in cash. I tell them that and they just look at me, happy birthday, Sonia Key, happy birthday. So they just look at you weird and it's like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. Um. Anyway, Canyon country. It's cold up there. I was running up there yesterday. Cold as shit. Ice on the ground. Cold, cold, cold. So yeah, I know. It's just so weird. Anyway, I know Starbucks. Okay. So, uh, by problem, big problem taxing tips. Yeah, no, it is. That's why I give cash. I give, I use cash. That's exact. I will not. First of all, if I leave a tip on my order, how come Starbucks, how does Starbucks give them that tip legit they don't i don't believe they do um yeah i'm in the house okay so look at this look at this y'all same here cash in the drive through yeah it's it's cash in the drive through when i have it but my local starbucks and a huge shout out to them but like i say i'm not fucking going to tack on my card no 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 i give you cash when i do and in the morning i just give them chunks lori and i do the same thing libra lori and i that's what we do we just give you chunks. When I have a little extra money in my purse, I'll give somebody on whatever shift of wherever I go an extra 20, an extra 10. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do that. That's how I'm doing it. So yeah, they can kiss my fanny ass, except I like the coffee. So Irene will be gone for one month on Christmas. Okay. I don't know what that means. Um, anyway, here's what I wanted to say. So I wanted to say this. Okay. I like the cat's eye polish. I don't know what that is. Yeah, fuck the G-O-V. I'm going to make a rap song about that. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so listen, y'all. These people, these people. So let's explain something here. Um, Sloan, it's been seven here in London. You mean seven degrees above freezing or seven degrees below freezing? Twelve. I guess that's above freezing. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Oh, first, wait, I was like, here's the thing. Here's the fucking thing. Okay, first, Natalie, and I think it's Mark, Natalie and Mark, beautiful Natalie and Mark. Look, look at how sweet. I received this from Natalie and Mark. Thank you so much. I'm going through everybody. This is from Ginger B. Look, Ginger B made me this astrology book. Self-proclaimed astrologer, I might add, since it's not real, right? Aren't we considered a fucking joke? Anyway, oh, ah, drop the paper out of it. Ugh. Anyway, look how beautiful it is. Look, look, look. 
so beautiful. Thank you, Ginger, as I drop the paper, um, which we'll put back in in a second. Okay, and then I got a beautiful gift. This was from Heidi, and I think Heidi was the one that sent me the coffee money, if that's you, Heidi. I so appreciate your donation. I'm going to call it coffee and rascal money. So it's kid money and coffee money. Thank you so much. I know. I've never said I'm for entertainment purposes, but, you know, whatever. So thank you so much for that, Heidi. I got yours. And I, if Heidi's the one that sent me the other stuff, and I don't know who sent me this, because I can't find the package because I'm a weirdo. But look, you know who you are that sent me this, okay? Look, 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 y'all. Cuddle duds. <laughs> cuddle duds. Y'all tried cuddle duds? Thank you so much, whoever sent me this. A lovely package. Cuddle duds. And thank you for that, Sarah. Thank you. And look, some warm, cuzzy... Um, what do you call them? Sweatpants. Okay. Beautiful navy sweatpants for me to run around in and pretend I'm in clothes when I go outside because that's what I do. I know. I'm going to keep me so warm. And then look at this. Thank you so much for this. I just, I, I wish I could find the card with this because I know there had to have been a card, but I don't know where it went. Look at this. This came to, this is a sexy nighty long nighty for me to parade around in do 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 anyway <laughs> this is sexy nighty it's not really a nighty it's a dress i think dress and that and it's beautiful thank you for that it's called another chill so it's another um i guess like a cuddle dud but it's another one it's so cute so cute so, so cute. It reminds me of the dress that Paigey wore. So slinky. So cute. And then, okay. And so then we have, yeah, Mark, Mark and Natalie sent me the figurine. I'm just opening their card right now. I've grown nails. Excellent. I cannot do it. I keep breaking them. Look, they sent me, I'll open the card. I just opened this. Thank you so much, Mark and Natalie. Okay, now look, another one came. Oh, yeah, on the Cuddle Duds package, I got the best gift ever. This is a steering wheel tray <laughs> so that I can stop spilling my burritos in the car when I eat them behind my trainer's back, right? There you go, right? <laughs> this is called a steering wheel tray. I fucking love this. <laughs> Seriously. You know I'm trying it. I'm going on a road trip, so I'm going to try this because I eat and try not to spill shit. Thank you, Bethany. Thank you so much. I try not to. <laughs> Excuse me, officer. No, I'm paying attention to the road. I'm flying the plane and I'm dining while I'm flying <laughs> the plane. <laughs> anyway, I give this to Jordan's mom too. We should try it on a road trip, right? Because we're always driving. <laughs> Steering wheel tray, y'all. <laughs> Steering wheel. Eww. Yeah, excuse me, officer. This is why when I'm driving a rental car and <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> when I'm driving a rental car and it doesn't have the windows blacked out, I'm like, fuck, these people can see me. That's why I blacked out windows in all my cars. My boys taught me that. I don't want people seeing me. I don't want people, I will go back to the Idaho. I, I just remembered I have to thank everybody though. And this, I got a beautiful crystal attached to my tea bags. Look, look, so nice. And this is from, I just know who this is from. I just read, the, Cindy. This is from Cindy and Cindy is an abdicate, ab abdicate. She abdicates for hydrating because hydrate dehydration causes a lot of problems with people. So she abdicates for it, okay? So she gave me a whole bunch of literature on this. She sends me beautiful letters, and she always sends a crystal, and it's a beautiful Christmas card. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys all so much. You send me the most beautiful things. I've kept every single card letter and everything that all of you have sent. Everything. 
just beautiful that everyone has sent. Um, and of course, what did I order for myself? Yeah, that's right. And overdose. These are fentanyl test strips because there are people I know who need this. Just saying. Um, oh, look at that. There's fentanyl test strips. And again, um, oh my God, I can't pull that down. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat up there. All right. Just be, I, so I get that. All right. So here's what I was saying about the kids, the kids, the four kids. Yeah. The, Morgan Freeman. Come on. Who doesn't know that? Okay. Wait, the four kids in Idaho, I feel like it's connected to one of the fathers. So it may be some kind of a jealousy, revenge, something. Okay. Something with them. I'm not quite sure what it would be, but I don't feel the father did anything or anybody like that. I feel there's some sort of like revenge on a family or specific focus on a family. And that could be a serial killer as well. That could be, look at this. It's going, that's so weird. It's being a little bitch here. Uh, so the real, well, Morgan, Morgan uh, changed, yeah. Yeah, somebody could be jealous over one of the parents or envious, whatever you want to call it. That's what I felt like. And that's as much as I can get. I literally can't get a lot. Anyway, Morgan Freeman married a woman that had a daughter. He adopted said daughter as in he raised said daughter. Um, one of the fathers speaking out hired an attorney and a PI. Yeah, because, because some, look at this. Why is this going this way? Now this is going to bug the living shit out of me the whole time. I don't know why it's doing it. fentanyl. Yes, fentanyl to test cocaine or whatever people are doing. I'm putting it in the kids' packets in their stockings. No point in telling them not to do drugs. They're all fucking doing drugs. So I'll put in fentanyl test strips and give them out anywhere I can. Anyway, Morgan Freeman and then the daughter that he raised had a daughter. And look at this. What is going on here? What? What is going on? I don't know what is going on. I don't know why this is doing this. Anyway. Morgan Freeman started dating his daughter's daughter, but they're not blood, so he thinks that's okay. It's absolutely horrible what he's doing because it breaches every every single like boundary that a person has. Like if you're sleeping with the oh honey, Angie, I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry about the ODs. I hate that for you. I'm so sorry. It's devastating. You'll never get over like your daughter passing. You won't. Yeah, he groomed his daughter, his granddaughter, and then she ended up dead. She ended up dead. Angie, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, it keeps. I keep poking the camera because it keeps going black on my end. So, Angie, I'm so sorry. I know, girls, mom. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, somebody got even with somebody that that's as much as I could get. But what I wanted to say is like Woody Allen, but this is even worse. It's a granddaughter. So it's like a 40 year, 40 year age difference. And can you see that? It just goes dark. It's annoying, annoying. It wasn't doing that. And now it is. It's a bitch spirit, bitch ass spirit around here. Anyway. Um, so yeah, Angie, I'm so sorry. See, fentanyl is very dangerous, obviously. Drugs are dangerous. They want you to do drugs. They want to kill us with drugs. So, like, if you want to kill us with drugs, like, don't take them. Don't do anything that they want you to do. If they legalize it, yes, Elon Musk's father, another pile of crap. Um, okay, so here's the thing. These people who want, I want you to understand the concept of this. So there are people that believe in God, Buddha, Allah, Christ, all of that. Okay. There's people, every time it starts doing that and that's bugging me. So there's people that believe in all of that. All right. And those people that believe in their religions, believe in those religions that have very similar principles, treat people well, do unto others, don't commit murder, you know, all of those things. Some people are born into, I know now there's a new Narcan resistant. I know sometimes people believe in new, um, new types of philosophies that, say, that basically say you are your own God. So when you remove the existence of God and Christ, then you say you are in charge of your life. 
So you look, it's doing it again. So then you're in charge of everything. So you don't have to follow the rules of others. You're in charge, which you have free will, but within the context of other things, right? So then they do things because they want to cheat on us. What I mean by that is they want you, they want you, okay? Look at that. Oh my freaking fucking freaking it just started it's being a bitch whoever's playing with this phone is just bugging me so here's the issue they want you and me i'm so sick of my videos not being done professionally it's like so bothering me so what they want is they want us all to go out there and they want to cheat against us by making the most money and acting like oh i'm making money i didn't mean to it's just because i'm better than you you know, Kim Kardashian, it's just because I'm better than you. I'm going to keep selling shit. Now she's selling flavored toothpaste with fluoride. Duh. No, no, no. Okay, don't. Then they want to give themselves awards because they're stars and they're special. Well, when they go out onto the astral level, they claim out there. So by astral level, I mean they leave their body. What I'm saying is they leave their bodies and they are given riches and wealth and men and women and whatever they want cars and houses and they see it like it's another landscape okay so they they get this is really annoying so annoying can you guys still see me because i'm going to keep talking look at i have to keep doing that and i don't know i'm gonna have to phone them anyway i know so yeah, so here's what happens. What they what they do is they want to be better than you. They're designed to make you feel like shit as a human being. So they're 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 cheaters in <laughs> fuck off with this. Oh my god. Anyway, they're cheaters in life. They have to have all the money, all the power, everything to be better and to act like, "Oh, I'm just so humble. It's I'm just lucky." It's by design. It's, but turn the screen, oh, screensaver off. I will. I'll do that next time. I'll figure it out. Thank you. It's by design. Look at, but it wasn't doing this in the beginning. This is so annoying. Um, so it's by design what they're doing. Okay. So it's by design and they do so. And they are, they are showing, they are shown a world of everything they want in their head. Anything you can pick out of their head, they are given the wizard of Oz. You know, they go down the yellow brick road. They get the gold. They get the riches. They get all of that. Still doing it. I'm going to see if it shuts off. If it shuts I'm back, y'all. Can you see me? Oh, NZB over there. Thank you for that super chat. I see it. Can you see me? Can you see me? I hope you guys can see me. Okay. No, I'm back here. I had to fix the screen to see if it would work. <laughs> um, I'm really sorry. I have to cut. I, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know what to say. It just, it happens. They love doing that shit. I don't know. Anyway, what happens on the astral level, I was reading the directions and how to turn off the light and how to turn this off and how to turn that off. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but next time I'm not going to use this phone. That's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to use this phone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. When they, um, when they go on to the astral level, I want you guys to understand this. When they go on to the astral level, they are stepping like outside their front door. So outside of their physical body into another world. So they see everything they want. Oh my God, I can have all the food, the sex, the men, the women, the kids. I can be the, the ruler, the king, the queen. Look at how many people are naming their kids king, queen, saint, you know, Lord, I mean, are you fucking kidding me? Really? You're naming your kids that? Really? Who told you that that was okay? That's a sign of what they're doing. They want you to think that you're literally the one that can control everything. When you step out of your body and you can't control things, so when you're so far gone, when something comes in you, which we're going to call a little bit demonic or entities, when you're gone like that, okay, out of your body, and when you step out like that, once you die like Prince and all that, they're out there in nothingness. So it's like having a drug trip in your closet and you think that the trees are lit up in the closet and you're talking to the fairies and, you know, and, you know, uh, Al Pacino's hanging out with you and you're having all the coffee you want and you're, oh, Prince, yeah. 
you're you're actually actually Prince was not a good person in that he was 31 when he met his wife Maya and she was 16 or Murda whatever whatever her name was forgive me for getting it wrong but he she was 16 he was 31 16 31 what are you doing what are you doing just asking I know it's Prince but what are you doing that's wrong you are wrong you are wrong to do that. Prince was a good man, but don't ever think for a minute that Prince wasn't, you know. Yes, I have heard about the upside down Christmas trees. They love to fuck with us. They love to say, fuck Christ. And that's what they do. Anything they can do. I, I knew somebody that lived with Prince and actually was dating him personally, who was a client of mine, and she was traumatized. I heard a lot of things about him. That does not take away from his creative ability, but here's the question. Uh, Prince Prince was one of them. They came and collected. They took him out like a common drug addict. They took Michael Jackson out like a common drug addict. Do you see how they 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 what's the word I'm looking for? They cut they bring you down to commonality and you become nothing but like a common statistic. You piece of garbage, you're 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 common. They, do you get what I'm saying? All of our kids are ODing and dying from fentanyl and drug overdoses and all kinds of things, right? And then these people, Prince, Whitney, uh, Rock Hudson, whoever, held up on, Freddie Mercury, held up on a pedestal like, oh my God, we all want that, right? And then when they die, they just literally fucking kill them for no reason. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And so Michael Jackson knew about it. Marilyn Monroe, same thing. So once they agree to the contract, that's right. There are lawyers that hook, that's right, Margo. Once they agree to the contract, then they are continuing to make, oh, Bowie was definitely one of them, please. Um, I'm not a huge fan of his, but he was definitely one of them. He has some good songs. Um, I don't know about Irene Cara, but this is what happens. But here's the thing. When you take the deal and they, like Celine the people eater. Oh my God, who said that? Shut up, Sloan. You're going to get in trouble again. Tom Hanks has a sister with the same disease. Why do you suppose that is? Where is this disease coming from? Stiff person disease, really? Stiff person disease. I have retainer mouth disease. But anyway, stiff person disease. What, what? Is, are you, what? Hello, what? Um, what's that about? Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, 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 and I'm a crazy psychic clown, so don't take me fucking seriously. Get off my YouTube, people. I mean, Jesus. Anyway, okay, so I know turning into stone, but isn't that scleroderma? So when they talk about stiff person disease, are they not talking about scleroderma or is it different than that? Because you scleroderma, Bob Saget's sister had that too. So interesting. Well, I, yeah, I know vampires not getting their meals. Celine Dion, Celine Dion to begin with. I mean, okay, first of all, we're supposed to look up to her because she has a beautiful voice. But here's a question to ponder. I've known really talented, beautiful singers in my life, like super serious. I told you my friend, Liz, Leslie, who did, she actually did the Muppets with Prince. She did the puppeteering in the Muppets beside Prince and she sold her show to Disney where she created the three like Andrew sisters singing 40s tunes. She was phenomenal and they shelved her show and drove her insane stealing her ideas. Okay. And no, I haven't yet. Mm -mm. I haven't. And so here's the thing. If you agree to the deal, you are actually cheating in life. So that is like the Kardashians going out and going, look at my butt implants, okay? That's what they're saying. They're like, I'm a Kardashian. Look at my butt implants. They're real. Really? So you are so fucking special that you have an ass that looks like a coffee table that people seem to think is a good thing. Anyway, you are so special. And your coffee table just fucking went away now because, because why? right? Yes, Celine was groomed, but here's the thing. If she weren't so greedy to get out there and be famous, then she wouldn't have accepted the deal even as a 12-year-old. So these people that we 
Actually, breast implants are gross too. I'm actually mad at myself that I did it. And it's because you know why? Once you diaper butt, diapy butts, I know. Once you put something fake in your body, it becomes the only thing you identify with. Like if my breast implants left, I wouldn't know where I stood. So nothing else on my body. I just had to have those boobs, right? Like that's kind of sick. So I fell for that one, which I'm ashamed of. I should not. However, I'm not taking them out. So there's that. But when you look at Celine Dion, there's how many good singers out there? So do these people, Adele, Celine, um, Whitney, Barbara Streisand, Babs, do all of these people, are they special or do they get their singing gifts or their whatever gifts because they, they've taken the deal? So are they gifted that because they've taken the deal? Do you see what I'm saying? Did they really have that ability or did they just agree to eat the fucking cake and take all that shit so they could be better than you? So they could run through and be much better than you are, right? According to them. Um... I know, come on, did Twitch what? Yes, yes, he did. No. And see, I, honestly, somebody was bitching me out for that. I'm like, the man, okay, here, just, I'm going to ask you guys just to hypothetically, we can't get into anybody's head. But first off the bat, first off the bat, women, cannibals are more, yes, exactly. <laughs> women, cannibals, what planet am I on? I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm here. Okay. I don't know why, but let's just, let's just look at this. Let's look at this. So you are a guy at the height of your career. You're a dancer or a DJ. I'm not sure which, cause I'm not really familiar. I don't watch his, that, that woman's show. I don't like that woman. So you're one of those people and you're on the show and I can understand. I've been on a lot of TV shows, so I've gone on them and I'm not one of them. That's why I don't have my own show on, or well, maybe I never would have. Anyway, um, here's the thing. If you are one of those people on the show and they think that you're going to be like their buddy, so they ask you to come to their dinner party and they do shit and you're thinking, I want coin, I want money, I want a Bentley, I want a beautiful wife, I want my beautiful kids, I want all of that. So you have three kids and you're promoted to producer. I guarantee you, you are complicit somehow, somehow. So if you go against whatever the hell it is they're selling, then like, uh, oh, Simon Cowell is just fucking ridiculous. What about, you know who I was thinking about today? The busiest man in Hollywood. He's just so fucking special. And at five foot nine, perfect for fucking everything with his little white boy face, Ryan Seacrest. What'd you do, Ryan Seacrest? What did you do? Exactly. Anyway, not the point. I literally came out of my mouth. But so you do all of these things, right? You do all of these things. And what if one day you actually say, I don't want to do this anymore. I may have been a raging whore drug addict. I'm just going to say that to distract from what he was, but just put whatever you want. And you're like, I want to go back to God. I want to connect to God. You were not getting out of the gang. It's like gang banging. They take it. Do you guys, I know y'all watched um, Breaking Bad, right? Okay. He did Dick Clark. I can't, I used to, yeah. Anyway. Um, so Breaking Bad, right? They take the 10 year old kid and they go, you want to be in the gang? You're going to drive up on your bike and you're going to put a cap in that guy's head. The 10-year-old is then in that for his entire life because he's committed that sin. So when he tries to turn evidence and he tries to go against them, they will, oh, come on, Adam Sandler. Do you really think that guy's funny? Do you even think he's attractive? Why are we calling them movie stars? Why do we call these people movie stars? Why is somebody like Tom Cruise a movie star? Who died and said, yeah, that guy, that fucking guy, that fucking guy, he should be the epitome of physical whatever it is he is. How'd that happen? How'd that happen? Yes, Adam Sandler, I don't like him. How did that happen? Will Ferrell, I can't watch. And I love Will Ferrell, used to. I can't watch him. When he was a cheerleader with Sherry O'Terry, oh my God. 
<laughs> Sorry, I digress. Some of the shit they did is great. I know I've been watching Breaking Bad. I love Breaking Bad. But understand in Breaking Bad, they have the kid kill that other guy on the street corner, come right up, put a cap in it. That's what they do. This is a neighborhood. Like that's what they do. So just turn it around into Hollywood terms and ask yourself if everybody's in a club so they can be the special people. You're now special. So you're going to make money for everything you do. You're going to be bowed down to. You're going to be able to have 16 houses all over the world or whatever Johnny Depp had. You're going to be able to do every initiation. Right. So when you walk away from the initiation, just like the gangbanger at age 10 who has a kid that he wants, just like I'll give the guy's name, the tattoo artist in the valley, Triggs, former gang member. They sent a, I believe it's a young guy. They sent over to kill him years later after he got straight and clean and opened his tattoo business and was well-respected. After he became his own person and connected like that, they took him out because you can't join the gang and then get out. Very rarely are you going to do it. I guess witness protection, but they did that. And so that's what happened. You can't get out. So that's what happened. Apple Valley Giant Meth Lab. There you go. That's why you're not going to get out. So that's why you shouldn't align in groups. If you're in a cult, look what they do to people in the Mormon group or in the, the Davidian Temple or Jim Jones in Guyana. There were people like, like, peace out, dude. I'm not drinking your Kool-Aid. And look what the hell they did. They killed them. They will never let you get out. You are not allowed to shine in your own space. You, they want to control you. It's the mafia through this. It's the it's mafia. Good, good. Thank you for that. Thank you for the super chats, y'all. It's the mafia. The union. Look, I'm sniffing. Seems like I was doing something at Studio 54. <laughs> ah, Tom Cruise. Tell me why that guy is a movie star. I want to know. Definition of star is something that shines brighter than anybody else, okay? How did they come to the conclusion that Tom Cruise was that person? What's so different about Tom Cruise and reading off a script? And why do they keep... Naomi Judd's an obvious one, okay? Because she went from poor... That's what they tell you. They were poverty-stricken. They were, yeah, paid to play, exactly. They were in poverty. They were homeless. And then they worked hard. Golly gee. And they broke into the business. Bullshit. You're not getting into the business unless you do something. Oh, golly. What is this, Mayberry? And then speaking of Mayberry, Opie as well, okay? Like, you're not getting into it. You will not get into it. You will not step away. They will blackball you, harass you, and do whatever. And that's another thing. So now getting on to uh, the DJ that left. Um... Yeah, I don't know about, sometimes I like Andrew Tate and sometimes I want to be like, I know I can't Tom Cruise, Tiny Dancer, clearly like, now I can never listen to that song. Here's another thing, okay? Here's another thing. I'm so stuffed right now, I apologize. Uh, I was on Kelly Clarkson's show. Oh, and some fucker in Reddit, okay? Some fucker, I'm answering that question. I just got stuffy. When I did the Kelly Clarkson show, I saw that she was going to get a divorce. She asked me on live TV, um, how's my marriage going? What am I going to say to her? Yes, I told her something else other than that because her husband was staring at me because he produces a show up in the booth. So he was very well aware. What am I going to say on national TV? Why are you putting me in the position to ask about that? I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say it, okay? But I did call Arlene Ring, ring on my way out of the studio. Arlene, guess what? Guess what? She's like, what? I go, Kelly Clarkson's going to get a divorce. So then when Kelly Clarkson filed for divorce, she's going to go, Arlene calls me and goes, shit, you were right. I can't say that on camera. I mean, don't be stupid. So I have to keep it very surface. If they actually think that you can read anything, anything. And yeah, someone's like, oh, and she lied on camera. Really? So I'm going to say you're not going to stay fucking married to your husband while your producers and your people and your husband is up in the booth doing whatever it is he does, producing your show. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh-huh, yeah. 
So I answered other questions. Look, I'm, sn I'm so, sn whatever. Anyway, it was just ridiculous, all right? So anyway, there's this Reddit page with a bunch of bullshit about me. So yeah, shut up. Anyway, until you have to do it on TV. So you get your ass on TV and you go tell them. Uh, put garlic inside of your nose. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm going to do that. Let me do that right now. <laughs> Take some garlic off my nose. Yes, let me do that. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, no, it's not bad. No, Carrie, it's not bad to pray for money, but you won't get money if you pray for money. And here's why I say that. The concept of manifesting is, okay, so when you manifest for a specific thing, I want to get married. I want a man who looks like la, 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 whatever. I want to make a million dollars. I want to have a baby, whatever it is. When you are asking for it, you are telling the universe you don't have it because that's why you want it, right? I know. Lula's right down here. So I'm sorry. I'm literally sniffing on camera, which is disgusting. So when you pray for money, you are letting the universe know you don't have it. The more direct way would say, I wish to be abundant in every aspect of my life. That covers it. You're not being specific. When your specific specificity, <laughs> I almost said that wrong. When you're specific like that, you are letting them know you don't have it. Well, the love of money can be a sin if you're one of them that is cheating. But if you manifest to be abundant for yourself, there's nothing wrong with you having enough money to pay your bills. That's the, 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 the mode. That's how they set this planet up. When they say that this planet, the system is broken, no, the system is the way they want it to be so they can fuck with us and keep us indebted with them. What do you think that student debt is about? What do you, th what do you actually, here's something to consider. What do you actually think being on welfare, getting, um, food stamps or EBT cards and putting people in the projects. What is that? People in the projects with less money, technically, feel worse about themselves, right? They don't have the clothes that they see the other people in the suburbs having. They don't have the cars. They don't have the food. Some of them don't have electricity. Some of them don't have bathrooms, all of that kind of thing, right? So when they feel like that, they're more apt to fall and turn into taking a contract. So the government can go into the projects and start their little projects within the people that don't have enough to know what to say, to know what to do. They can give a mother who doesn't have anything but macaroni noodles to feed her child a bunch of money and have her buy food for the first time. And it's a, it's a minus, minuscule amount of money, like $200 but you know, in six weeks and that's nothing to buy food, but for her, it's a lot. And then she lets these nice men in the government talk to her kids. And then you've got yourselves a human weapon controlled by the government, some form of a governmental office. That's how it works. So it's just really stupid. Okay. A stupid, stupid, stupid and effing and stupid. Then you're going to look at people that take the deal because they want to be special, okay, which is weird in and of itself. They want to be better than you. They want to be this. They want to be that. They have us all putting bags in our chest and bags in our ass and pumping up our lips and using Botox as if we're not fine the way we are. I love obsidian. I'm obsessed with obsidian. And as if we're not fine the way that we are, we are all fine the way that we are. If we want to wear makeup, it's great. If we don't want to wear makeup, it's great. If we want to wear moo-moos, it's great. If we don't, it isn't. And it took me a long time to realize that in my life. It does not matter. I just happen to be Leo, so I want to look like this. But if you don't, it's fine. If you want gray hair, that's fine. If you're flat-chested, those little bodies on the women that are, quote, not as well endowed, those are beautiful athletic bodies. I mean, they, can, they look great as runners. Their legs are developed. Their bodies are good. It's fantastic. Why do we down it? Why do we down it? Why do we do that? And we look to people on camera and we say, you know, um, oh, they're better than me. Why are we comparing ourselves? Why are we doing that? That's what TV is about. They want you to compare yourself to everybody out there. You can't. You have your own gifts. I have my own gifts. She has her own gifts. He has her own gifts. It's 
ridiculous, okay? It's ridiculous. Well, of course it's ego. I fell for that. I got two bags in my chest. I have two bags in my chest. That's a terrible thing that I did. And you know what's even worse? If I were a Kardashian, I'd be telling my kids that I don't have implants. These are natural. Can you imagine being a teenager, a little girl? Can you imagine? And having a mom like a Kardashian lie and say she doesn't have plastic surgery. And then, <laughs> we you're funny. Exactly. I got the 36. Oh, I got 30. 32 triple D's because my back is narrow because I have no back, you know. That's why my trainer, stupid, but um, because I need help doing all of this. I'm doing pull-ups, push-ups, planks. He's torturing me. And then he goes, did you, have you been eating well? And I'm like, if you say so. <laughs> no, I ate fries. I ate cake. I know Kylie's lips. Those are natural. You, you poor fucker, you look ugly. If you look at anybody's pictures in their 20s, they are gorgeous, okay? They are, I love lifting the weight. My, my arms are truly sore. They are gorgeous. It takes a lot though. I've got to, what I have to do is eat my protein a lot and I love popcorn. So if I eat popcorn, I don't eat my protein, because it's calories for me. So I'm still like in 1970s with the dieting thing. Anyway, um, put that, <laughs> exactly. But you have to just do squats. You'll be all right. Well, I run, I run up an incline. I do, I do 1,200 flights of stairs in one of my runs straight up into altitude. So that is squats. I do a lot. But here's the issue with things. We, you know, some of the most beautiful people, talented people, kindest people on the planet are ignored because they don't, they're not a star. Now these people, when they take the deal, like Celine, like that girl, like one of our Canadian ones, when they take the deal, they go right out of their body into the astral level. This is why they have all the sodomy sex. That does not mean they're gay. I'm not talking about gay and I love you sex or gay and I'm a fuck boy sex. That's up to you. I'm talking about deliberate specific in that area of the body in order to traumatize, okay, the chakra system to the pineal gland and through to the crown chakra. When they do that, that is why they do that, okay? That is why they do it, to gain power. Don't ever kid yourself. I'm not saying it can't feel good. I'm not saying if you're gay, you don't like it. That, those are separate issues. You're not coming at it with the same mindset, metaphysically, that's what they're doing when this happens to children, when this is what they do in Hollywood. They're not all gay. They're gathering energy. This is what they're doing, okay? This is what they're doing. Well, the Nick Carter stuff has been, dead. I mean, Aaron Carter said it and they called him crazy. Remember that. When you tell the truth, they will call you crazy. When you speak the truth about anything, they will call you crazy. When you're in a, in a, um, in an abusive family or a toxic family setting, and you say, that person's touching me, you will be kicked out of your house, you will be taken away to the court system, and you will be locked up. When you say, that person's a drug addict, you're crazy. When you fucking sexualize someone, when you steal from them, when you hit them, no, you're crazy. I'm always going to speak out, okay? So don't talk to me about your shit, and don't tell me because whether you're my family member, my child, my husband, my grandmother, my daughter-in-law, my grandkids, I will speak the truth. I'm not going to shut my mouth to save face in my family. I'm going to speak it to correct the behavior, my own included, so that we are not stuck in a repetitive cycle. That is what generational curse breaking is, is to do that. A lot of these people are born into families where it's generationally, okay, they're, they're incarnated into these families. So Celine Dion took the deal. She made billions and now she's going to freeze like a statue. Maybe she ain't getting her drug of choice. Yeah, you heard me. Maybe she's not getting her drug of choice. That's exactly right. Maybe she's not getting it. And when they die out of their bodies, when they literally leave their bodies, they're out on the astral level and it's nothing but dark. So again, it's just like you dropped acid hung out in the closet and you have nothing in your hall closet. It's empty, but you see a whole bunch of designs on the wall and the fairies are talking to you and there's kittens and puppies and dogs and handsome men and a pool party. The minute you sober up, guess what happens? 
there ain't nothing in the closet. You're in the dark by yourself. And then you're stuck there. Then you have to facilitate. Do I want to connect with the Christ consciousness or do I want to keep being my own God? Because death, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for that. Because death is the absence of God in your life. It means you believe you are your own God. And when people say they're atheists and they don't know, if you say you're an atheist as opposed to an agnostic, which you're entitled to be an atheist, I don't give a shit what you are, okay? Just stay out of my face. But if you're an atheist, that's fine. But you're saying you don't believe in anything but yourself. You believe in yourself. That's all you believe in. So that's fine. But when you die, peace out. Good luck to you. You will find out what's going on. So it's just always been convinced. Uh, yeah, me too. You either know God or you don't. Um, that's just the way it is. But it's so interesting how many people think it's okay to follow. And these people believe they're going to live forever. Now, somebody like the Lizard Queen, you know who I'm talking about, Elizabeth? <laughs> Elizabeth, the Lizard Queen. Somebody like that, somebody like Epstein, somebody like... Um, I don't know, whoever is going to jump ship into another body. That's what's going to happen. They're going to throw out an existing weakened state, throw it right out and jump in. These things happen. People don't want to acknowledge it. People don't want to acknowledge it. Oh, Sam, I'm sorry your cat passed. I just saw that. People do not want to acknowledge. And for Ashley on here, Ashley's mother passed, I think it was this week on Monday. So, I've been saying prayers for Ashley. Her love, she looked after her mommy and her mommy passed. She dressed her mommy so cute. Um, so I feel like a lot of these people in their pursuit of getting one up on you because the love of money is so strong for them, they have to have it. I feel the pursuit for them is so, so strong, okay? So, so strong that they will do anything because they actually believe that this life is all that exists. Now with the DJ, his energy is interesting. I'm just going to ask you to suspend belief for a second. So everybody on planet earth wants to be a celebrity. I know people will say they don't, but you either want to be a clothing designer. You want to be a famous lawyer. You want to have enough money to take your kids to the Bahamas, put them in private school, put braces on their teeth, have enough food, put enough money away for retirement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So whatever it is, you want that kind of level of success. We all do if we're being honest about it or enough food to eat or a roof over our heads. So let's say you're a DJ and you come across something and you're like, you know, I'll play this fucking game because I don't believe it. I don't believe if I eat this food, it really matters. I don't believe God is going to punish me if I do this. Then the game gets heavier, okay? Then the game gets heavier and heavier. Security, absolutely, even though there's no such thing. But the game gets heavier, heavier and heavier, right? So then you're given more and more power and they expect you. Hi, Tracy. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you so much for that. Ashley, beautiful Ashley. She's on here. Yoga Ashley. I think it's Yoga Ashley 28. I might be wrong. I might be wrong on that. It's at the top of my head. Thank you so much, Tracy, for that. Thank you. Um, the, so when somebody like the DJ comes forward and the DJ decides, so let, let's just get this straight. Him, along with Chris Cornell, along with Chester Bennington, along with Kate Spade, all have children. All of them have children. All of them are successful beyond belief. Everything that you and I want, they can have. They can buy as many houses as they want. They can have, <clears throat> excuse me, beautiful partners. You can see she's back. She's somewhere. Now I'm getting stuff. They can have all of this stuff. But suddenly at age 40, at age 56, at age 48, at age 45, 54, whatever it was, they decide, you know what? I've got all this success, all of this shit. And my mental illness took over. <coughs> what is that? No, that's not. Uh, there you go. 
Ashley 420, right, or Yoga 420. <laughs> I can't look on my phone. It's up here. Anyway, so they, they suddenly decide, you know what? I have three gorgeous kids. I'm on a hit TV show. I dance like I'm a fucking rock star. And people like me. I'm a kind person. I have perfectly straight teeth. I'm a good looking man. I have a beautiful, beautiful wife. So I'm going to use my mental illness and do this. That's just not happening. That's not happening. Okay? That's, that's not happening. That's not how it happens. So there is something else going on. That's just not how it is. And when they describe removing yourself off of this planet, one must understand that human beings don't do this. They try to make everything scientific. They try to say, oh, it's science, it's mental illness. Do you realize, just look at it this way, perhaps mental illness is seeing the world the way it is and nobody believing you because they choose to be delusional. Maybe that's what it is. I know, they get really bad. I'm sorry, it just happens. She's in here and I'm in here and we're all in here. <laughs> and I'm covered in cat fur because I was cuddling with her because she's so cute. Okay, so when when we're talking about mental illness, there, I knew you were behind me furring it on up. I bathed her in the shower with me. I don't advise doing that. I know. Hold on, I'm going to bring her up for a visit. Come on. Come here. Come here. There. <laughs> no, no, they want to say hi. They want to say hi, Furby. Come on. Come on. There. Look. Look at your people. There. There she is. It's Miss Furby. Fur baby growing fur for the winter. There she is. Look, mommy loves a Furby. I call her Keith and I rock her. <laughs> she thinks I'm crazy. Isn't she sweet? You, I know you're Tallulah, not Keith. I get it. She looks at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, one more time. Stop. No, look. I'm going to hold you like that. Then you can go. There, look. There's your people. There she is. There she is. There, look, there. <laughs> okay, you're free. Go. Okay. Um, yeah, she's so cute. I know. She tries it. She doesn't put the claws out when she gets me in the face. This is why I'm sniffy, though. Oh, so cute. She's so funny. I cuddle with her on the couch. And no, she's not having any of that. She, I love her. I know I love her so much. I call her Keith and I hold her like this. And she's like, no, 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 no. She give me that look like, fuck you, lady. That's not my name. And I'm not your baby. And put my ass down. I'm a cat. You're a person. That's what she says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, thinks I'm crazy. I can read it on her. And then one day, this was a while ago, John walked in here and he was looking at her and he's like, you remind me of Keith. <laughs> She's swatted. So it's so funny. Um, oh, you hate cats. No, Barbara, they're so cute. She's really cute. She's cute. <laughs> She's cute. She's a lovely animal. I don't know that I like cats either, but I like her. I like all my cats. Who am I kidding? I've had cats. Okay, so when you're looking at somebody like the DJ, ask yourself, and you're right about the warlock situation. You're right about all of that. They have to be high performing in order to get into those positions of power. You will not be given power on this planet unless you play the game the way they want you to. It's really unfortunate. This planet has actually been hijacked. We have been hijacked by what we call aliens, which I think are entities, demonic. And we've been hijacked by other beings that want to remove the human species. They want to use us as slaves. We are being enslaved. I know people think I'm crazy. I know what they say, but that is what they think. They think that, that they can control us. And so everything about us, they have no ability. Um, yeah, I know. They have no ability, okay? They have no ability to do what we do, to be the way we do. Um, if you want to play guitar, learn, Daniel. Learn. You can do it. You can do it. So with him... Um, specifically, if I were to go, what, if I were to say anything with him, I would say it has to do with being lured somewhere 
and being told what's expected of you and then being ambushed. So I feel like there was a meeting that went on and then, you know, things happened and then we got the, the reading in the paper, whatever. Um, yeah, good for you. Good for you. Siamese cats. Oh, so cute. Or Siamese twins. I don't know if you said twins or cats. Um, so when you, when you look at it, these people are doing all kinds of things. That's what they do. It's a spell. They move their hands. They let you know who they are by their hand gestures, by what they do. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can stick your fucking little hand gestures in my face and cover your eye and do whatever it is you think you're going to do. I don't care. I'm protected by God. And that's another thing, okay? That's another thing. Why God doesn't allow this. This is not God's planet. This is not who runs the earth. We are, I don't know how we got here. I got to take this off. It's driving me crazy. Um, sorry. I always wear my glasses and now I'm getting a headache. Anyway, um, this is not God's planet. This is the devil's playground, so to speak. It's the beast system. And every single one of these components, Celine Dion, the DJ, the government, that moron in California, all of these people connect together like a slinky train and they maneuver around the earth. So when you go to that side, you become part of that system. That is part of this, this world. Okay. So it's the beast system. It's not like one hoof devil running around like this. I keep thinking of Seinfeld and you know, the story <laughs> and the priest thinks he saw the devil and the angel. And okay. Anyway, um, it's not like that. It's a beast system. It's connected. It's connection. So they need people to step in the middle and break apart. It'll still grow back like a lizard's tail. It'll still grow back, but they need people to break this apart. Okay. Break this apart. So that's exactly, that's what's going on here. So when you pray to God, God knows what's going on. And this is the, this is weird. I am not one to go to church and I'm not one to read the Bible. However, this is definitely prophecy and this is the end of days with what's going on because they're literally calling people minor attracted persons. Never, that's right, that's fucking ignorant, right? Never on planet earth. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, all of you for the wonderful super chats. Thank you. Never in my life did I think that we'd be so fucked up and we are fucked up and corrupt as shit that anybody would literally agree to minor attracted persons. I'm sorry, what? What are you fucking talking about? I always knew there were pedophiles out there. I always knew that. I knew that as a kid. As I said, when I first started dating John, I said the world is run by Satanists and pedophiles. Those were the words at my dinner. Every single person I looked at, I'm like, pedo Satanist, pedo Satanist. So what we're dealing with is how did we get here? Why are we here? And they talk about karma a lot. And they talk about, you know, oh God, now my hair has gone bananas because I use my freaking things to hold it. Yeah, it's not going to end on this planet, but the veil is open and some of those people are being removed. And a lot of them are being removed into circumstances where they don't get anything. They don't see anything. They don't, um, they don't accomplish anything. They're not able to do it, but you have to know. I know they think we're so dumb. Well, I'm so dumb. I'm not going to take your drugs. Okay. I'm not going to go to your doctor and go four times a year. I'm not going to get your colonoscopy or your mammogram or your pap smear. I don't have to fall in line with that. I don't have to do it. There's nothing wrong with me. Okay, so if there is something wrong with me and something happens to me, then fuck, I'll eat shit and die. We all die. Here's the catcher. They don't die. Okay, so they are really, and you don't recognize it. These are people, a lot of these celebrities are people who don't die. I sound really weird when I say that. Vampires, okay? So they are the undead. We look at them in a particular way. Do you remember the movie, um, The Green Mile? Do you remember it with that piece of garbage, that Hanks fellow? Anyway, you remember it, The Green Mile? Remember how he didn't die? Do you remember how he didn't die? That's a truth-telling thing. 
That's a truth-telling thing written as a fake story. But that is a truth-telling thing. He didn't die. He took the deal and he lived forever, okay? Everybody around him died. So if you are that character... No, Tom Hanks' character. If you are that character, no, the dirty cop, he went bananas because his brain couldn't handle what he saw from the psychic who saw the truth but was punished and locked up for it. Do you see what I'm saying? So the psychic, um, Michael Clark Duncan, who sees the two little girls and understands what goes on, he gets blamed for it because they're like, you're a fucking crazy person. Thank you for that, Jane. Thank you so much. He gets blamed for it, so he gets locked up. Everybody knows he's innocent, but they kill him anyway. He goes and rests in peace. The stupid cop, the we dweeble cop, that piece of shit decides he's going to, you know, whatever, take the energy from the whatever. Then that guy dies because he goes crazy because his brain can't handle it. Okay, can't handle it. Tom Hanks takes it by choice and he continues to live and to live. Now, if you've lived 3,000 years, just go with me on this. If you've lived 3,000 years, right, and you've lost every one of your wives, every one of your kids, don't you want company with you? Don't you want company? So how do you get company? If I'm a drug addict and I smoke weed, and I know it's not good, but misery loves company. How do I fucking get you to smoke weed? Oh, I tell you how great it is. I offer you a bunch of stuff. Highlander, exactly. Oh my God. They jump in and out and sacrifice and light shit on fire. <laughs> Hello. Um, and they go through the, the Stonehenge using the crystals. Hello again. Um, but how do I convince you cocaine is good? Just... Just the first time you smoke meth, I know, Mr. Jangles, yeah, I know, Mousetopia, I remember that. That's what I told my kids when I let the hamsters go. They were going to the hamster park. Really, they got eaten. Not the point. I was a bad mommy that way. Anyway, I'm not doing a mammogram. I don't care. Outlander, exactly. It's Outlander. Thank you. Um, so when you're looking at it, how do I get you to come with me? Even if I have to be deceptive to you, how do I get you to do that? Oh, I tell you how great cocaine is. So let me get this right. You're snorting a substance that permanently takes away your dopamine, the thing that makes you happy, right? So it never grows back. That rewires your brain, right? Rewires your brain so that your brain pathways are never the same. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So you do that. You snort so much cocaine that you get holes in your septum. Like it, it's so toxic. It's going through your bones and through your membrane and the top of your mouth is falling. Your sinuses. Um, and they get you to keep taking it. Hmm. What's that about? So let's extend that. What if I came to you with this amazing drug and I said, all you got to do is come to a party with me. All you got to do is fuck that chick. All you got to do is say these words holding hands and naked. All you got to do is eat this food. All you got to do is talk to that baby all you got to do is do what I want you to do so I can film you so I know you're not going to backstab me. And then, and then you do it and you're one of them. But you're not always one of them because you can always step and go back to God, right? At that point, because you're not the undead. But when you step and they know because they can see on the astral, they have you controlled on the astral, they have you controlled in the physical. They have you controlled with your bank account. They have you controlled with your kids. As soon as somebody says, shut your mouth or we won't pay you, everybody went and got the jab. Really? Because if everybody said to the government, 
I don't want to go get that and you don't have a right to cut my money off because you are not in control of my health because you don't even know if I'm healthy or not or what and are you healthy? But no, no one did that. They just listened out of fear of not making money. Not understanding that in truth, if we were not taught that death is the ending and believe and believe me, okay? And you can't travel. Believe me, when my son died, Everything I say to you hit the floor because I want my Keith here. I want my Keith now. I, I don't care that he's alive somewhere else. Where is my child? Okay, I'm telling you that. So it's easy to say that, but living in that perspective, I want my child with me, period. I want my Keithy. I want to smell him. I want to hug him. I want to yell at him. I want to block him on the phone. I want him to block me, but he's not here. But he does live on energetically and they teach us about death look at the final the finality that they teach us about death they say it's the end you have to grieve you're never going to see them again it's a loss blah, 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 all of this no it's not death is the absence of god okay death is the absence of light what they're talking about is transition and they attach the word death to it to it and then we have services all over in churches that are as morbid as fuck and Jesus and they they preserve the body and then they stick it in the ground and then you have to go visit it in the ground so it 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 absorbs your continued fear that is not what happens when you die you transition energetically and they know it and they don't want you to know it so they send you to a funeral they dress you in black you should be in white they do all of that, and then they tell you, this is the end, you have to grieve. You're never going to see them again. We don't know what happens. with science. We were born from monkeys. Whatever they say. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Oh, my God, I'm sorry, Angie, Jesus. So that's what they think. So when you go into the church and you see a very, it's very sad when someone you love dies. I'm not going to lie. My my son, seeing him, like I was just like, fuck me, what just happened to me? Like, why am I this person? This isn't fair. I don't fucking agree with this. I wouldn't have had a child if I was going to have to bury a child, okay? Even though I cremated him. But I wouldn't have, I would never have kids to have to deal with that worry. You know, because you don't really think about it until it happens to you. Truthfully, you think about other people's kids and you can't go there because they're not your kids. And if you think of your kids, it'll kill you. But that's because you think death is finality. Death is not finality. Death is the transition of energy. So let's look at a pregnant woman. A pregnant woman carries a vehicle in her belly and the soul of the baby comes around the vehicle and moves in the vehicle and then pops out, pops in and goes through let's just say five hours of labor or whatever it is. I know everybody had 20 and 18, but let's just say five to 10 hours of normal, whatever it is. So you go through labor. That baby, once he grounds into committing to come into this dimension through that portal, that baby is choked in utero, meaning the oxygen's cut off. That's what a contraction is. And the oxygen's cut off. The baby goes through a tunnel. Of, okay, six inches, seven is what they say. That little baby coming all the way through there takes hours for him to travel, okay? For him to travel through that little, little, little teeny, teeny, tiny spot. And then he comes out into the light. And he'd been hearing voices all along, meaning the parents and everybody else around them. And then he comes into the world and he is now existing in a different state than he was when he was on the other side of the womb, okay? So he exists in a different reality, a different dimension. The same thing with death. When you look at, oh, you remember your birth. That's so great, Daniel, so great. I see very few people that do. That is so amazing. Write it down so you don't forgive it, so you don't forget it. Um, when you look at when we die, you leave the physical vessel, you rise in through a different portal, and I think it's literally an energetic portal. You move through the portal and you end up in a different dimension. And you begin a life there. So you have a birth there and a death here. We call it death. It's transition. So it's a transition. I see dead people. Good, Sandy. Good. That's what it is. It's a trans. Yes, baby girl came so fast. Exactly. 
nerve wracking. Everything's nerve wracking about birth. When you think about it, especially if you've had a child, there's many of us on here that have had children that have passed, some people two or three children, and it's it's horrific. Who's agreeing to that? Who's reincarnating for that kind of karma? Oh, well, we picked our lives. No, the fuck I didn't. I'm telling you right now, I did not pick. I know my soul. I did not pick to lose my son. I am not that brave. I don't want to deal with it. I'm kind of like lazy and I like to have fun. So I don't want to do the work. I never picked that. No one is going to convince me. So we are gaslit on this planet about what we picked, okay? <laughs> no, no, I didn't pick it. And why are they wiping our memories to come here? Who is doing that? Yeah, they want slaves here and I didn't fucking pick to have my son die. No one picks to be an abused, raped child. Oh, well, they picked their life. No, the fuck they didn't. They may have picked elements of it, but somewhere it got hijacked. So I want you to start thinking of that. Because every little child that ends up dead, that little girl with the UPS driver, with that freak of a UPS driver that took that baby after delivering her Barbie dolls and then just really fucking killed her. Yeah, she didn't pick that either, okay? That's not karma. I believe reincarnation is real. Yes, we're here. I have vivid memories of living past lives. I have recognitions. I recognized John immediately, okay? I recognize that. Um, well, they say no one's a victim. That's a form of gaslighting too. If you get raped, you're a victim. You may not want to call yourself that, but you're a victim during the attack. So when they say no one's a victim, they're gaslighting you. Yeah, you are if you get raped. If you get punched in the face by random street thugs and they break your nose and steal your purse and stomp on your chest, you are a victim of violence at that time. That doesn't mean you have to let it control you, but that is a victim. I mean, people got to say, you're not a victim. Yes. Yes, you are. You don't have to follow through with lifehood of victimness, but you are. I mean, you're not going to go around and say, I picked this. No, you didn't pick it. No one's picking to be abused, punched out. Something happens when we get here. Our consciousness is hijacked and something happens to us and we are put in a very low vibration circumstance, almost like we have little chains on our back and they want to control us so that they can reap what we sow. So fuck them. Don't do it. Literally align yourself with God and don't do it. Right? Right. Exactly. Um, yes, you can look different when you jump timelines. Remember, Timelines is like an artist drawing a tiny little different cartoon, a little fragment. Oh, thank you, Nola girl. Thank you, guys. Tracy, so generous. And, and the other uh, one from Australia, so very generous. Thank you both. Thank you. Um, it, timeline jumping is like smidgen over, just a smidgen. And understand when they're on the astral level, they're going ahead in time and backwards in time. Ahead in time, they're time traveling. These things exist, okay? These things exist. And they want to control us because they think that they have the access to all of what we have. And they are liars about it, okay? Yeah, um, yeah, I think the instant recognition does mean you've had previous lifetimes. Time is moving so fast now. I can't stand it. That's why I can't get in here. <laughs> I can't get in here. I'm like, ah, it's making me crazy. Um, making me nuts. Oh, well, they, okay. First of all, time travel and the, okay, just humor me for a second. We are free flowing beings, but we've come into a dimension where they say there's 24 hours in a day. So, 24 broken down is a six, right? And so you need seven to eight hours of sleep. I don't know how to add all these numbers up. Time is almost a concept of the beast system in order to keep us suppressed. They don't live on time. They, how, how, do, you, how do you actually think Donald Trump travels? He's 78 or 76, I don't know which, or 77, whatever. Okay, so he's in his mid 70s. How does that man travel and do so many things that you and I as, as young people in our 30s couldn't do that much? Ask yourself that because they're coming in and out of different timelines and they're on the astral level out of their physical body, literally out of their physical body, absorbing our energy while we die over here, okay? Absorbing our energy while we die, 
we whatever they are ramping up oh they're doing all kinds of things they move the frequencies and they do all kinds of shit you know what i say i don't care i don't care that's what i say i don't fucking care what you do so when they how do you think somebody in there how do you think this shit happens they're just wandering around not sleeping doing 16 press conferences in a day um Oh, yeah. Thank you, Kristen. I was going to bring up the crypto. So Giselle Bunchen, the female man, I mean, Victoria's Secrets model, and her husband, Tom Brady, I drink a lot of the chrome. Those two were the head faces for that cryptocurrency company, T something, whatever it is, TKR, or whatever it is. They were the head advertisers getting all the other stars to donate their money because remember these people want to fuck you out of your money they want to take every fucking ounce of your money and gobble it up like crazy bitches anyway Giselle and her husband filed for divorce as the crypto company was FTX thank you <laughs> I make up things. Those two bitches filed for divorce so that they could split whatever it is and keep their money to themselves. Thank you, Jen. And keep their money to themselves, right? And then give money and then appropriate it differently and somebody would take responsibility over here and then Giselle would walk with that. When she walks with that, who do you think she's gonna give her money to? So that DJ lost all his money. That's what they want to have happen because the devil, i.e. the beast system, always lies. So when the beast system lies, they're going to come back for your money. The FTX, yeah, whatever that is. I don't know. I, whatever it is, FTX, yeah. So I make up our ABC. But they're going to do that, the cryptocurrency company. Do you think that you can beat the government? Do you think the government doesn't know about cryptocurrency? Or do you think they want you to think that cryptocurrency so they can take your fucking money? That's what they did. So the DJ also lost his money. They all lost their money, okay? So I don't want to say about it. It's like Bernie Madoff. <laughs> but you know what? Kevin Bacon lost money with him. You can't get that much back on your deal. How come we can't get these deals? But this fucker can do that, right? So exactly, rest in peace. I pray for their souls. They don't like it when you pray. They don't like it. But that's what's going on. There's a fight for money currency right now. And that has, it's a setup. It's a definite setup. Yeah, it's a distraction. It's all garbage. And here's the thing too. The other thing is, when you are looking at what people do and how they do it, you have to understand every single thing that they do is designed to keep us locked, intimidated, fearful. Once you know you're going to die, don't care. You're going to die. So I had somebody say to me, if you speak up, you end up dead. And I'm like, if you speak up, you end up on God's side and there is no death. Okay. Even though I don't have my son here, I understand my son did die but he transitioned, but there is no death. So you need to speak the truth in order to, and if you die, you die. See, we would be standing up to these people if we knew you don't die, but they tell us we die and we have to cry about. It's just, it's stupid. I just don't, and I'm scared. I mean, I'm scared. How am I going to die? What's going to happen? I don't know but we all do it. So there's not one of us that gets out of here that we don't do it, except for those that transition into bodies. So young actors coming up are possessed by old actors who are blood suckers and popping back in. This is the problem. We need to get off this planet and into a different planet, okay? Yeah, Tom Cruise, I don't even know. So yeah, but don't believe any of those people. Don't believe I'm okay dying. Just hope it's peaceful. Yeah, I don't really particularly want to get murdered or anything, but hey, whatever happens, I'm not going to shut my mouth. You can sue me. You can yell at me. You can beat me. You can threaten my entire family. You can threaten the cat. We don't care. We're going to stand with our truth. I will speak the truth. The only people that benefit from people not speaking the truth are people committing crimes and atrocities against others. So you must speak the truth. And if your friends don't like you to speak the truth, then they're not your fucking friends. So there's that. Let me know when I can. Yeah, let, let me know when you can pick out a casket. I'm not going to do a casket. Keith was just buried as he was. I didn't use any, not buried, cremated. I used no embalming. I didn't do any of that. I didn't do any of that. 
that's all crap. So no. All right, y'all. Uh, when someone passes over, why don't they end up with the loved ones? That... I don't know, Andrea, who they end up with. I'm not really clear. When I talk to hospice nurses, I talked to one this week, they do start calling out their relatives and their friends and seeing other people and all kinds of things. So, and I've seen that myself with my mother-in-law. So they do start doing that. I don't know who comes to cross you out. It's different in every case. And it can be somebody who's closer to the realm that we're in to walk you over there um, you know, it can, yeah, you're a soul forever. So don't sign the contract because these people, they sign it. First of all, you can't sell a soul that doesn't belong to you. There's that. Secondly, these people are doing things and they are committing more atrocities against their soul, which is what the beast system wants. If you're a fucked up drug addict, they love that because you carry shame and guilt and then they can feed off you for your whole life to where you feel like a piece of shit. And then you take, yes, that's right there. Silent Tom. I can't read that. But yeah, that's right. That's who's suing me. That guy's family. That woman's family. Um, anyway, I mean, that woman's whatever he is to her. But what you, what you have to understand is if they can commit you to, if they can trick you into committing a sin, whatever the sin is, whether the sin is you smoke crack all day long, you fuck your neighbor, you steal your mom's money, you rob the liquor store, you beat up your wife, you, you ruin someone's car, whatever it is, if they can do that to you, Oh, hell yeah, they'll do it to you because you will carry guilt because you're a decent person and you've been projected upon to do that, but you're going to carry the guilt. If you carry the guilt, you're going to continue to be negative to yourself and they can feed off you like a doppelganger stuck behind your head, you know, like a Klingon right behind here, like that. And they can do that. I don't think spiritual warfare is going to be over here because the beast owns this area. Somehow we're here. Somehow we're here, and I don't understand why we're here. I don't think I chose to came, come here. I'm going to keep saying that. I don't believe I did. All right, you all. I really have to go blow my nose. <laughs> oh, my God. So stuffed. Um, all right, y'all. Thank you so much. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm being back. And if you ordered an astrology chart, as I said... It's like six weeks before I get it to you, so I'm doing them in order, and I am doing them. Please don't yell at me. Um, also, my calendar's open for January. I don't know if it's still... I mean, it should be open unless they've all booked up. I only booked up a little bit. I only do like a couple of weeks. So it's like two weeks in January. Anyway, it's open. So I'm saying that. So peace out, you all. I hope everybody's good. Always pray. Understand they hate it when you pray. So keep doing it. People hate it when you exercise because you do it and they don't. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. Keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Love you all. And thank you so much for the beautiful gifts. I'm going to use this. This I cannot wait to try out. When I go on my road trip next week, I can't wait to try this out. <laughs> I'm going to have a gourmet dinner while driving. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Let's see if I get arrested. Let's see if I get arrested. Okay. Let's see if that happens. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to do it. I have to do it. Walk in peace, you all. That's a great saying. That's my best Christmas present, right? <laughs> Look, it's even got a cup holder. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm drinking a margarita while driving. This is the, uh, the airliner, <laughs> eyeliner, airliner, not eyeliner, airliner. Okay. Bye, you guys. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Thank you so much, everybody. Mwah.